For the video version of this podcast, please see our YouTube channel, Daughters of the American Revolution National Headquarters. Otherwise, please enjoy this audio podcast on your favorite streaming service. We want whoever is doing America 300 to be able to look back and say, wow, look what they did at America 250. Look what all these chapters were able to accomplish during that amazing time. Historic preservation, we're in that business. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Football Master Stewart, and I'm the National Chair of the DAR Today Podcast Committee. Well, if you missed it, and we hope you didn't, our September Patriot Profile story showcased the initiative and the bravery of the women of Edenton, North Carolina, who risked all to voice their intentions to the British Crown. Previously unrecognized for their contributions, these women now join the ranks of our rich Patriot heritage. Honoring and celebrating America's Patriots past and present is a passion for all DAR members. Our society will be looking at ways to honor all of our Patriots as we near our nation's semi-quincentennial. In fact, that is a main focus of the Wright administration, to ready our society and our committees for this coming celebration. So join me as we have a quick chat with someone I know you'll find very compelling and delightful. We're speaking today with the National Chair of the America 250 Committee, Catherine Walker-West. Welcome, Catherine. Brooke, thank you so much for having me. It's a delight to be here with you today and with our audience on DAR today. Thanks so much. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this committee, this America 250? Yes, love to. Thank you. We're a special committee. The America 250 Committee was formed during the Dillon administration, and we are preparing ourselves to celebrate the birth of this nation. The observation actually runs from 2023, which is the 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party, all the way through 2033 and the Treaty of Paris, which effectively ended the Revolutionary War. So that is the time period that we're focusing on. Uh, During the past two administrations, we really focused a lot on internal readiness, which was often referred to as phase one. So it was getting chapters ready to welcome new members, creating logos and marketing materials, and really getting the foundation laid for what we were going to do from a public observance standpoint. And now we're beginning to transition into that phase two, which is external observances. Um, I like to say that we're layering on phase two. We're not replacing phase one because we want our chapters to always be ready to welcome new members. But the Wright administration is really at the threshold of transitioning to those external observances. And that's really what the committee, the America 250 Committee, has been spending its time on these last several months, determining what we're going to do in the Wright administration. So as you're moving to phase two, to these external observances, why don't you tell us a little bit about what that looks like? Well, Brooke, one of the most exciting things that we're doing in this administration is what we're calling the celebration grants. Mrs. Wright announced those on July 3rd, and since then, we've had over 40 chapters submit celebration grant applications. The wonderful thing about the grants is that each chapter and state society can engage their own community. So I like to refer to this as a gift to the nation one community at a time. These grants are $500 each. They're funded by the President General's Project Fund. And the requirements are that the chapter or the state that is actually applying for the grant must promote the birth of our nation and honor the men and women who achieved American independence. Certainly as a byproduct of that, if you can generate new DAR membership, if you can engage the local community in some family history research, those are wonderful added benefits that again will help propel membership in the long run. But our overall objective is to make sure that we celebrate the birth of this nation and honor those men and women that helped us achieve American independence. And before I give you a few examples, let me also say that 45 days after you complete your project, 
we want to know what you've done. So we're asking for an after action report. That's important for us. We want to know what you intended to do and how successful you were, what you actually accomplished by using those funds that the National Society has provided. Um, and those come into our National Vice Chair for the after action reports, Nancy Folk. All that information is up on the website. Now, as far as a few examples, um, we have uh, a chapter that actually celebrates, um, has a community celebration. They happen to be here on the East Coast, so it's easy for them to identify patriots buried in their local area. They also know that these, this is a, a community that's been longstanding, and a lot of the families are still around that descend from those patriots. So as part of their community celebration, they're really focusing on the six patriots that are buried in the local cemetery and the lineage that those patriots have left in their local community. It's a perfect example of what to do. Now, I know a lot of the states uh, and chapters west, <laughs> and you don't have to go too far west before you wonder, well, we don't have many patriots around here. What are we going to do? We're really working on taking the information that chapters submit to us with creative ideas, and we'll be populating the website and putting that up on the DAR Patriot Post as wonderful examples. I will tell you there was a chapter that uh, had placed a marker, a DAR a Patriots marker, America 250 Patriots marker, and then they wanted to spruce up the area. They wanted to add a QR code in a permanent way so that the people that came to read that monument could then scan that QR code and it would take them to information about DAR.org, about the Revolutionary War, and really help promote the birth of the nation, and honor the men and women who achieved American independence. And so our celebration grant to them is affording them the opportunity to finish out that marker placement. And you know, no local patriots buried there, but they still found a way to make that happen. So those are just two examples of how those celebration grants can be used. It's going to be really exciting to see what some of these chapters come up with because as you said not a lot of patriots buried in the other western states but there's some really amazing daughters and i think they might come up with some creative and inspiring ways to to celebrate right i think there's uh, the sky is the limit i know in my community we have a series of presidential streets they're the founding fathers of this nation. And I'm thinking we should do um, uh, some special signage on those street signs for the next 10 years, um, just as a way to celebrate and to bring attention to the birth of our nation and honoring those men and women who achieved American independence. So lots of opportunity. And I know DAR members are very creative extremely creative. So we're very excited to see um, the rest of the celebration grants come in. Uh, two other caveats for you, if I may. Um, those project grants need to be for projects that have not been completed. So we're looking for new opportunities to provide some sort of civic engagement um, in the local community. And second of all, those grants, uh, the projects must be completed by February of 2025. And the reason for that is if we look at the 45 days after that to get the after action report, we are going to compile our results of what's been able to be accomplished in the right administration and provide that to the NSDA archives. Because we want whoever is doing America 300 to be able to look back and say, wow, look what they did at America 250. Look what all these chapters um, were able to accomplish during that amazing time. That's great that you'll keep that record. That's right. Really well, wonderful. historic preservation, we're in that business. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your committee? Well, real quick, let me just tell you another little area we have, and it's called community engagement. Um, it's really a project or a section of the committee that Mrs. Young really did a lot of when she was the national chair for the America 250 committee. Now, we know Mrs. Young was wearing two hats. She's also on the, the National Foundation, and she was our national chair. And so what we've asked her to do is uh, allow us to help her with some of this community engagement work at the local level. So for those states that have a 250 commission, and again, I'm talking here about um, 
the, the state of Virginia, the state of Kansas, the state of Texas, if you will. If you have a 250 commission, that's great. If you do not, then it would be very important for you to be um, engaging with the local legislature, you as an individual to engage with the local legislature to try to help establish a 250 commission in your state. And our national vice chair, Carrie Ann Alford, is in that role of community engagement, and she is your liaison if you need help to engage those legislatures to make that happen. And even if you do have an America 250 committee and you have questions, you want to know what others are doing, Carrie Ann Alford, our National Vice Chair of Community Engagement, is your go-to person with that information. Well, Catherine, thank you so much for being here today, for taking the time, and we can't wait to hear what happens with the America 250 Committee in the future. Thank you so much for having me. It's um, an honor, obviously, to be named as the National Chair for the America 250 Committee, and I know Mrs. Wright is so excited, not only for the celebration grants, and we are thankful that 3,000 chapters in our society are going to be able to take advantage of those celebration grants, but for some other things that we will be announcing uh, in the future. So I'll just say stay tuned for, for that little tidbit. <laughs> That's a nice teaser for next time. Again, thank you, Catherine, so much. Thank you. I know chapters will be holding many special events with regard to this special celebration during the Wright administration, and we want to highlight those events, but we also want to showcase those chapters who are having uh, great ceremonies or special events in their communities. And so in so doing, we would like to highlight the Shining Mountain chapter in Montana this month. On July 25th, 2022, the Shining Mountain chapter in Montana was at the Palm Peace Pillar National Monument. They were there for the Clark Signature Day event, and there they awarded the prestigious Historic Preservation Medal to Paul Eppinger, the director of the Friends of Pompey's Pillar Volunteer Group. This award is to recognize and honor the many volunteers who have worked hard over more than 30 years to promote the historic preservation of Pompey's Pillar at the regional, state, and national level. I would encourage you to explore the significance of this national monument and to visit it if at all possible. It's no wonder that the Shining Mountain chapter awarded this preservation medal. Thank you to Patricia Crisp, chapter regent of the Shining Mountain chapter in the great state of Montana for sending us this information. Would you like to tell us about a great event you've had in your chapter or state during the Wright administration? We would love to tell everyone about it. So here's what you do, send an email to darpodcast at nsdar.org. Look for exact instructions on the DAR Today podcast page in the National Information Packet. Veterans Day occurs on November 11th every year in the United States in honor of the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, marking the end of World War I known at the time, of course, as the Great War. As our podcast episodes air on the 15th of every month, we wanted to tell a little bit of the story of Veterans Day prior to November. As we mentioned, World War I officially ended when the Treaty of Versailles was signed on June 28, 1919, in the Palace of Versailles, just outside of the town of the same name in France. However, fighting ceased seven months earlier when an armistice, or temporary cessation of hostilities, between the Allied nations and Germany went into effect on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. For that reason, November 11, 1918 is generally regarded as the end of the war to end all wars. Veterans Day pays tribute to all American veterans, living and dead, but especially extends appreciation to living veterans who have served their country honorably during war or peacetime. Each year, the Veterans Day National Committee publishes a commemorative Veterans Day poster. The committee makes a selection from artwork submitted by artists nationwide. The winning design is distributed to veterans administration facilities and military installations around the world and across cities and towns throughout our nation. The design then graces the cover of the program for the official Veterans Day observance at Arlington National Cemetery. 
The theme for Veterans Day this year, 2022, is simply honor. Veterans are proud of their military service in defense of our nation. Honor reflects the military value and tradition of answering the call to duty. There is a distinct honor in serving to protect our way of life and the Constitution of the United States of America. You may or may not know about the DAR and our unfailing support for the military and its veterans. To mention one shining example, in 2018, New York daughter Ruth D. Hunt of New York City Chapter and SDAR received a Lifetime Certificate Award on behalf of a grateful nation and the staff of the United States of America Vietnam War Commemoration from the Department of Defense for her work volunteering with veterans. In recognition of her efforts, NSDAR provided the venue, and the award was bestowed during Continental Congress in 2018. Salute to all of our DAR veterans who humbly and proudly wear the Serving the Nation pin. And here on the DAR Today podcast, we want to give a heartfelt thank you today. We encourage all daughters to go one step further this November 11th. Stop and take a few moments to say thank you to a veteran and ask about his or her service. You may remember that one of the goals with this podcast is to encourage community engagement with local celebrations revolving around our American holidays. With that goal in mind, there are some wonderful events to honor our veterans all over the country. In the country's biggest city, New York, there's a wonderful parade that happens annually known as America's Parade. While in Houston, Texas, not only do they celebrate our veterans with a massive parade, but they turn the whole event into an opportunity to help veterans with a job, resource, and health fair for active and inactive veterans. On the West Coast, in the state of Washington, Auburn has the honor of hosting one of the biggest Veterans Day parades, and it looks like this year will, there will be over 200 units and a whopping 6,000 participants. Not bad for an old-fashioned Main Street parade. Another event of note is in Branson, Missouri, and this town doesn't stop at a single parade, but hosts an entire week of events. Be sure to check those out as well. The National Society Daughters of the American Revolution is not affiliated with any of these events mentioned, but we do want to highlight them as an example of what's available in your own communities, places you can go to show with your actions your support to those who have given so much to defend our freedoms. A few weeks before his death, President John F. Kennedy stated in his 1963 Thanksgiving proclamation, As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Well, President Kennedy's words are a powerful reminder that actions reflect what you carry in your heart. And what better way to show your heart than to share the holidays with those who sacrifice so much for our country? The holiday season is coming upon us, and most of us are fortunate enough to fill our holidays with love, joy, and togetherness. But that isn't the case for everyone, especially our active duty men and women and their families. Have you ever wondered what a Thanksgiving meal can look like for our troops? If they're deployed, will they attend a meal in the mess hall while their family has dinner back home without them? Many stateside men and women stationed away from their families will unfortunately spend the holiday alone. Imagine you're a young family stationed far from your loved ones and on a very tight budget. What does Christmas or the holidays look like for your family? Will there be presents under the tree and a holiday meal? And what does Christmas look like for a single soldier with limited or no family? But you may ask yourself, how can I help? Oh my goodness, <laughs> there are so many ways. I'm excited to tell you about a few of them because I know that daughters and the podcast listeners will step up and make amazing holiday memories for many of our active duty soldiers and their families. Go to your favorite website browser and type in the words adopt a soldier or adopt a military family for the holidays and several options should come up. These programs go by several names such as Operation Home Cooking, or Host a Marine, or Soldier's Angels, just to name a few. 
The names are different throughout the country, but the sentiment is the constant. Spreading love and joy during the holidays. And I know it may seem a little too early to be mentioning this in our October 15th broadcast, but many of these signups start in just a few weeks in early November. All areas that have a military base will more than likely have a program or two where you can adopt a soldier or a family and provide gifts or a meal. Most of the programs are administered by the local YMCA, the USO, or the Morals, Welfare, and Recreation Department of your local military base. The available programs are often divided by veterans, deployed troops, wounded troops and families. You can pick how you want to contribute. You can host a soldier in your home for a holiday meal. They're far away from home and would love some good home cooking and to watch a football game in a family atmosphere. There are also several programs that support military families that are struggling to make ends meet. And as many of us know, for these families, providing special Christmas gifts for their children is usually completely out of the question. Well, you can help by simply purchasing a special toy for a military child or purchasing gift cards to local grocery stores. We encourage you to get involved and see what programs are in your area. Providing these soldiers and families with holiday support is a way to show America's gratitude for the sacrifices these soldiers and families make. Coming up on October 21st, 2022, we will be celebrating the 130th anniversary of the first recorded organized recital of the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States of America. This 23-word verse was written by Francis Bellamy, and you know that we as DAR members will definitely be looking forward to celebrating that. We encourage you to keep your flags flying. This note was brought to us by Maria Blinn, the Flag of the United States of America Committee National Chair. Thank you so much, Maria, for bringing this to our attention. I leave you with this quote from James Bryce. Patriotism consists not in waving the flag, but in striving that our country shall be righteous as well as strong. Well, thanks for listening and be well, dear friends. Let's celebrate the stars and stripes forever. And remember, with all of your ancestors behind you, you are the result of the love of thousands. This podcast was written and produced by our incredible team of writers and editors, but special thanks to True Lewis for her story on Veterans Day, Sherry Stein for her passion about the Adopt-A-Soldier program, Cole Miller-Cohen for her beautiful graphics, and as always, Chris Hertz-Leffler for her superb editing. We are so appreciative of our President General Pamela Rouse Wright for her constant guidance, to our liaison and historian General Suzanne Heskey, and to Catherine Walker-West for being so generous with her time. The National Society Daughters of the American Revolution is a nonprofit, nonpolitical, volunteer women's service organization dedicated to promoting patriotism, preserving American history, and securing America's future through better education for children. Members are all lineal descendants of those who supported the cause for independence in the Revolutionary War. For more information, please visit DAR.org. This is the DAR Today podcast.